thousands of learners missed school last week in South Africa's Western Cape. That's because the Taxi Association is preventing contracted private transport companies from sending the learners to school in the Kailisha and Infulani, as well as surrounding communities. In some cases, about 90% of the school population was absent, according to the Education Department. The association says it wants a slice of the learners' transportation scheme contracts. But the Education Department officials say the tender process must be followed first. This week, many more could be at risk of losing more classroom time if the impasse between the Education Department and the Cape Organization of Democratic Taxi Association isn't resolved. So what's the way forward? I am Kemeni Amano, and you're welcome to The Square. Joining our gathering now is David Mania, his Western Cape Provincial Minister of Education in Cape Town, South Africa. David, you're welcome to The Square. Kemeni, lovely to join you uh, this afternoon, uh, and uh, uh, a warm uh, sort of welcome to your, to your guests. Indeed. Now, Talk to us about how the situation has developed since last week. So, as it stands, the taxi blockade uh, is uh, still in place. Uh, we have had uh, reports uh, as late as yesterday of taxi associations still uh, offloading uh, learners and turning uh, uh, learner transport uh, buses uh, around. So we had about 1,800 learners who were not at school today. I'm pleased that we seem to have some improvement with 993 uh, learners uh, not at, at, at school today. That is an improvement uh, compared to the peak last week where we had about 5,000 learners who are not at school uh, as a result of a taxi blockade imposed by, as you said, taxi associations here in the Western Cape. I see. But is this not in contradiction with, you know, the time when you went to court and you were able to secure that they won't allow your learners to move at the moment? So we have, as you said, we've taken the hard line. We've laid criminal charges against the taxi associations. We have uh, much uh, a higher police uh, presence, more visibility on the affected routes. And we approached the High Court last week where there was then uh, a, a binding agreement uh, between the parties that the taxi associations would not uh, intimidate, threaten and uh, prevent uh, learner transport from, from transporting learners to school. Regrettably, at least yesterday, uh, the taxi associations uh, had not uh, uh, abided by that agreement, and as I've said, we're still uh, turning a uh, learner transport uh, around, forcing uh, buses to uh, take children uh, home. Uh, I have to say that there has been an improvement today, uh, and in fact, uh, all our uh, buses on the four affected learner transport routes uh, were not stopped and, uh, and proceeded uh, to schools uh, today in the Western Cape. I see. Now, uh, help us understand uh, a bit more of what the Taxi Association are asking of from the Education Department. So, learner transport contracts are awarded in a competitive bidding process, but what the Taxi Associations appear to want under the guise of a, a, some kind of proposal to enter into a, a partnership is essentially for the department uh, to seed learner transport contracts to the taxi associations. And of course, what concerns me uh, is that I have some information at my disposal which suggests that the taxi associations want to, in fact, take this further and not only force the department to seed learner transport contracts, but also force the department to seed uh, all transport contracts related to nutrition and feeding schemes in our schools, and also all transport contracts uh, that relate to the uh, distribution of what we call learner, trans uh, learner support materials. And so what this is, is really a brazen and blatant attempt at extortion uh, of the, the education department in the Western Cape. 
so again one of the things i've had the department talk about is you know if they want to be part of the program they would have to go through due process what is this due process that they should be going through so we have been very clear uh, that we will not engage with any attack taxi associations until our learners are back at school until teaching and learning has resumed uh, without any uh, disruption. At that point, uh, our department would be prepared to engage uh, with taxi associations. But what they would have to accept is that our learner transport contracts uh, are awarded in line with the law and regulation, and there is a competitive uh, bidding process. And of course, uh, in uh, the taxi associations or any bidder that would want to, to bid would obviously have to comply with the conditions of those contracts. And of course, those contracts are, are demanding. They uh, demand that drivers be licensed, that uh, vehicles be roadworthy, uh, that vehicles uh, be permitted, that the uh, business owners be tax compliant, and of course that they uh, are regularly subjected to compliance, uh, compliance checks. That gives you some, some insight into how these contracts are awarded in a competitive bidding process. Uh, those contracts, of course, have very high and demanding standards, and of course the taxi associations have no interest in abiding by uh, by uh, those uh, those con conditions, and therefore, in my view, uh, they are attempting to circumvent these provisions, enter into uh, some kind of partnership where these contracts are automatically ceded to them, which of course uh, we will not and cannot agree to because it uh, is uh, illegal uh, in terms of our law and our regulation in South Africa. I see. In, in, in uh, response to what you said about you know sitting down with the department to make sure that they're going through due process. The Taxi Association has said uh, that they have tried that the last two years, and in fact, last year they did have a meeting with the department, but never heard back since then. It would appear that their position is that the department is ignoring the association. What do you have to say to that? So there were discussions uh, last, uh, last year prior to my uh, incumbency in this, in this position. But I do think that we have to pause here for a moment. Uh, if indeed the taxi associations were, for example, not satisfied, as you say, uh, that the department responded to them, there were then uh, alternative actions, other remedies. For example, the taxi associations could have written to the head of department. They could have written to me directly. And if indeed they were still not satisfied, they could have written to the director general of the province or to the, the premier of our, our province. And indeed, if they were still not happy, they could have approached uh, the courts for uh, a remedy and, in fact, to compel us to, to reply. But of course, they are not interested in uh, constitutional uh, provisions and approaches and alternatives. What they decided to do was to hold up to 5,000 uh, children uh, hostage in order to try to compel the department to agree to their partnership and illegal scheme. And I've been absolutely clear, it is not going to happen uh, on my watch here in the Western Cape. I see. Let's talk about the kids now. Um, how is this uh, impasse or row, um, depending on how you look at it, how is it affecting the teaching and learning process for these children? Well, I went visited a uh, one of the affected uh, schools, Academia Primary School, which is in Kyalicha, last week. And on the day that I visited, 90% of the learners were not at school; they were at home. Uh, the principal uh, and the uh, and teachers uh, were absolutely excellent. Were doing their best they could under the circumstances to uh, provide work packs either electronically or distributed uh, by parents in order to try to continue some semblance uh, of teaching and learning at, at home. But ultimately, you know, these learners who are uh, from poor communities and vulnerable 
uh, are going to suffer uh, learning losses on top of the extreme learning losses which all our learners experienced as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in South Africa. I see. We'll talk a bit more about, uh, you know, what, what the future looks like if this continues. But I want us to uh, look at your relationship with Codeta. It would seem that this is not new. This has been there for a while. And you, you have also, as you said, you took the hard line by going to court. Someone will argue that was a bit too hard especially if you want to get to the, to the bottom of it, you want to solve the situation, wouldn't you say? No, I would say that, uh, I mean, in a constitutional democracy, when a taxi association illegally holds 5,000 learners hostage, one has to take a, 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 a hard line and enforce the rule of law which is precisely what we did in the first instance by laying charges with the police who are now investigating charges of extortion, uh, charges of intimidation, and indeed common assault. Uh, also, we uh, increased the visibility of policing, particularly on the affected learner transport routes. And as you've said, we've approached the High Court uh, in order to get an urgent interdict to prevent the taxi associations, especially Cadeta, especially Cadeta, from uh, intimidating, threatening, and preventing uh, learners from being transported to school here in the Western Cape. I see. Um, one of the things that you're quoted as saying is the fact that you, you said um, you have criminal evidence against the taxi association for how they have treated your learners and some of your uh, private contractors. What is this evidence that you speak of? Well, at least one of the taxi associations in question has been absolutely brazen. Uh, they have made public statements about uh, what they are doing and why, and in fact uh, released a letter where they were absolutely uh, clear that they were behind the scheme uh, to prevent uh, learner tr transport uh, contracted by our department from transporting uh, uh, learners to school. So it was absolutely brazen, a little bit like Tony Soprano calling a press conference and announcing a new corrupt and illegal uh, scheme. So it was not very difficult to marshal uh, the evidence which we uh, plan to put before the courts uh, uh, during the course of uh, this week so that we can uh, move beyond our um, uh, interim arrangement and secure an urgent interdict against Codeta, preventing them, intimidating, threatening, and preventing uh, learners from going to school in the Western Cape. How is this urgent interdiction you're seeking process going so far? Well, we, uh, the first round uh, was in the Cape High Court uh, during the course of uh, Friday last week. And I was very pleased that uh, as a result of our actions, Codeta agreed, as I said, uh, to stop intimidating and threatening and preventing learner transport. Uh, that, of course, was an interim arrangement. We will be back in the High Court at the end of this week on Friday, where we will be petitioning the High Court uh, for an urgent interdict again, uh, which will be binding on Cadeta, preventing them uh, from uh, obstructing, interfering, and stopping uh, learner transport in the Western Cape. Are you worried that this hard line that the department has taken could result in a more dire situation for your learners? I mean, it, the ensuring that the learners return to school and that teaching and learning resumes uninterrupted is my top priority. I have, as you said, taken a hard line and it appears to be working. Uh, we have 993 learners absent today, uh, but you know, that is lower than the peak of 5,000 learners uh, who were absent at the same time last week uh, at schools in Kailicha and Surat. So I think I see that as evidence that the hard line uh, 
is uh, working here in the Western Cape. Very well. Uh, when we come back, I want us to talk about this 993 who are absent this week and which areas that they are from and what you have learned about why they could not come today, uh, despite your interim agreement with uh, the Taxi Association. You're watching The Square. We'll be right back. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. Many thanks for staying with us here on Village Square Africa. Today we are discussing um, education issues that have come out of uh, Western Cape in South Africa. Still with me is David Mania, his Western Cape Provincial Minister of Education. Now, I also have you know that uh, initially, with regards to the conversation we're having with David, we had arranged to speak with Executive Member of Codeta, the Cape Organization uh, the driver, the taxi association in uh, in the Western Cape, uh, Andile Kanyi. Uh, unfortunately, Andile has not been able to join us up until now. So we'll continue our conversation um, with David, who's here with us. So David, I was, many thanks for your patience here with us. I was um, asking earlier about the 993 who could not make it to school today what have you learned about their situation which areas are they coming from and uh, have you been able to engage the executives of of the taxi association on this matter the 993 uh, learners who are absent today are predominantly in the uh, come from the kailicha and uh, mufaleni areas and surrounds uh, and although this morning uh, our learner transport did proceed uh, and it was not uh, interdicted by the taxi associations, you might well then ask, well, why then were 993 learners absent? And I think the most logical explanation is that parents are uh, taking uh, decisions in the best interests of their children. And uh, I think they are still very concerned about their children's safety as a result of the intimidation and threats over the last few weeks and are probably uh, uh, taking a little bit of time to uh, see whether the situation uh, stabilizes uh, and whether you know they then uh, feel confident to allow their uh, learners, their children, to go uh, back to school. I'm obviously in regular contact with our principals and parents uh, communicating with them about the kinds of actions that we're taking to ensure that their children return to school and ensure that learning and teaching uh, uh, returns to, to normal. But I, I think that parents uh, are still very concerned uh, about the safety of their children in the light of uh, the past two weeks of uh, intimidation and threats uh, to uh, learners in the Western Cape. I see. Now, uh, speaking of actions, for some parents that will be watching us now, what action are you advising them to uh, take right now? Well, ultimately, responsibility lies with the parents. And parents uh, will have to uh, make a judgment call about whether they think uh, it is safe for their child to return to school. Uh, but certainly, I mean, we are working around the clock uh, to ensure that our learner transport uh, is properly uh, protected with high visibility uh, and with, uh, you know, police in the area. Uh, we are obviously pursuing the interdict uh, against Codeta, uh, and we hope that in the next uh, few days the situation stabilizes uh, that the, uh, it becomes clear that the routes are, are, are safe and parents then make decisions to um, 
uh, allow their children to um, go back uh, go back to school. But my message to parents would be essentially, uh, we are working hard to ensure that learner transport is safe. Uh, I would encourage parents uh, to uh, send children back to, to school. And if they feel uh, that it is unsafe uh, to, to send their child back to school, to at least then work with schools to, uh, uh, on, uh, to, to facilitate learning and teaching uh, at home while uh, this dispute with the taxi associations is resolved in the Western Cape. I, I can imagine that the, the department must be extremely busy because of uh, the situation. But um, is there a plan uh, within the, the, the province to make sure that those who lose classroom hours, is, for instance, from, from last week, uh, get what they lost back? So what, uh, as soon as uh, learners return to school, Obviously, schools will be responsible for assessing uh, the, the learning losses and then putting plans in place to ensure that uh, the learners catch up. And so, I mean, I mentioned that I visited one school uh, last week. Uh, they were already uh, starting to think uh, about how they would catch up the lost, uh, lost learning. And they were already putting plans in, in, in place to ensure that as learners return, uh, they could make up uh, the, the learning that had been lost as a result of uh, the taxi blockade here in the Western Cape. I see. Um, I, I also want us to look at uh, the planned stay away uh, that's coming up um, on Wednesday, according to the National Taxi Council. We'll see how that could compound the situation and what the department is uh, hoping to do to ensure the safety of students who can. But before then, I want us to speak about who your, your, your current contractors are. Uh, who are the current contractors on the scheme? So the current contractors are obviously private business owners who uh, own uh, buses um, and the appropriate uh, transport. They are, uh, you know, competitively compete for contracts on different routes, and then they are contracted uh, against a standard, which we discussed earlier, to deliver uh, learner transport on designated routes to designated schools, in this case, to Kayalicha and, and uh, Surat. And they are all non-association members, whether Cordetta or another associate, a taxi association. They, they are not members, as far as I'm aware, of taxi associations, uh, but they are represented uh, by learn various learner transport uh, associations, but they are not members, of, as, as far as I'm aware, of any taxi associations. So, so, so then, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to something we may have talked about already, but do, do you see how it would seem that taxi associations are sidelined in uh, the learner's transportation scheme? So the suggestion that taxi associations are sidelined, I think, is, is, is misplaced. Uh, there is a competitive bidding process, and any business organization uh, that qualifies uh, and meets the, the standard and the terms and conditions uh, of the tender is free, free to apply. So it's just simply uh, untrue to suggest that the taxi associations or owners of businesses that may own taxis are associated uh, with uh, uh, transportation in that sector are necessarily precluded uh, from the competitive bidding process. I see. David, how about we take another break? When we come back, let's talk about Wednesday Stay Away. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. 
Africa first. Welcome back to Village Square Africa. My name is Kemini Amano, and today we have been talking to the Provincial Minister of Education in the Western Cape, David Mania. We're discussing um, issues surrounding the learners' transportation scheme in that part of the country. Uh, it would appear that there is uh, a row between uh, the drivers' a taxi association in the area and um, the department, and the department has been doing all it. Like and uh, to make sure this does not affect learners um, as, as much as possible. Uh, however, I'd also have you know that we had arranged to speak with the uh, Taxi Association. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen, and so uh, that's why we're speaking with just David. But um, David, let, let's wind down on our conversation now. On Wednesday, the South African National Taxi Council is hoping to uh, have a, a stay away. Uh, obviously, Codeta falls under the council, and my guess is that there will be stay away in the Western Cape as well. How would that change the conversation, and perhaps how would that compound the situation for Lennis? So you're absolutely right. Uh, Santaco, which is the umbrella associations under which various taxi associations fall, uh, is planning a taxi stay away for tomorrow. The uh, Western Cape government are currently in negotiation with Santaco, uh, and we obviously hope to in avert that stay away. I have to be clear that this, the taxi stay away uh, is uh, principally focused on other issues, the uh, impounding of taxis, the licensing of taxis, and then a dispute about a particular route, which is uh, called B97. But nevertheless, uh, the, it is possible, uh, unless we are through a discussion today, uh, able to avert the stay away, it is possible that that stay away will go ahead tomorrow. And I'm obviously very concerned that the stay away will then compound the problem. Because, of course, when there is a taxi stay away, it affects other modes of, of, of transport. And what we've seen in the past, in fact, in the fairly recent past, when Santaka uh, uh, implemented a two-day uh, taxi strike in the middle of our metric uh, exams, uh, we had 128,000 learners who were not able to get to school over two days. So there is a big risk that if this stay away goes ahead tomorrow, the problem will be compounded, uh, more learners will not be able to get to, to school, uh, and teaching and learning will once again be compromised by uh, the uh, intimidation, by the threats, uh, and by the stay aways imposed by the taxi associations in the Western Cape. I see. But um, uh, look at this, you have unhappy uh, taxi Association in Western Cape already, and then they have a stay away. It would seem like a very fine opportunity to express their unhappiness. Do you think that this interim, um, if, if that be the case, uh, let me put that caveat to that, if that be the case, do you feel that uh, the interim um, agreement that you, you had um, with Codeta would perhaps uh, not hold any longer? Well, I hope that the uh, interim arrangement does hold through the taxi stay away. Uh, I do know that Santaka have called on their members not to engage in intimidation, threats and violence. So I hope that if the taxi stay away goes ahead tomorrow, uh, that it is peaceful, that there is no intimidation, that there is no uh, threats and no uh, uh, violence. Uh, but at the end of the day, that will be in, uh, in the hands of the taxi associations. We are going to ensure tomorrow that our learner transport uh, scheme operates and that we uh, provide a service to ensure that as many learners as possible do go to school tomorrow and that le learning and teaching uh, uh, continues so far as possible tomorrow here in the Western Cape. 
Uh, and, and finally, we, we, as you said, we can only hope that there is no violence because, I mean, given the history of uh, these stay hours, there's always some form of violence accompanying uh, the taxi, stay, the, uh, taxi association stay hours. Um, and uh, on the outside of the situation, I, I feel the need to be a bit worried for your contractors uh, who, 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 for no fault of the S, no fault of the departments as well, um, have angered the Taxi Association Codetta. Uh, and, and, and it brings me to uh, the question of, uh, are, you, are you thinking that, or perhaps, do you think that uh, the safety of, of your transporters, the, t the safety of the, of the kids could be compromised uh, tomorrow? There, there is always a risk, uh, and at the end of the day, the safety of our learners uh, and in, is of absolute paramount uh, importance. Uh, so uh, we parents, uh, our learner transport operators, and indeed the part, department will do everything we can under the circumstances uh, to ensure that our learners do go to school, but do so safely uh, tomorrow here in the Western Cape. I see. Uh, David, we wish you all the best as you go to court on Friday also. Uh, but thank you so much for your time here on The Square. Thank you so much and wonderful to join you at Village Square Africa.